From the station with the most local news in our West Michigan, Fox 17 News at 5 starts right now. Armani was a great person, you know, a great brother. You know, he would give his last, he would do whatever for us, and he was always willing to help no matter what it was. First at five, the family of a man killed in Grand Rapids this weekend, joining the hundreds of others nationwide mourning the loss of loved ones killed by gun violence. 25-year-old Armani Acklin was shot and killed Saturday night on Pearl between Monroe and Ottawa. Three others were also injured. The shooter, Fox 17 has learned, is now in custody. And that incident technically qualifies as a mass shooting, one of 49 that we've seen since that tragedy in Buffalo in a supermarket in mid-May. Gun violence experts say this isn't shocking. It's actually the norm that not enough people realize. I think there's some some forms of gun violence where people are still outraged, these really high profile public mass shootings. But I don't think that um, that most people really understand that that's actually not the majority of gun deaths. 10 dead in a shooting in Buffalo, 19 school children dead in Uvalde, Texas. While events like these beyond the scale of comprehension rightfully get the bulk of media attention, Lisa Geller with Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Violence Solutions says the issue of pervasive gun violence is a daily one. I don't see the same outcry for those everyday shootings, for domestic violence, homicides, for community violence. Every single day, Geller says, a hundred people in the U.S. die of gun violence. Not all cases grab national headlines, but they happen more often than you'd think. We see, you know, depending on the definition, anywhere from 10 mass shootings a year to 400 mass shootings a year. Consider this, using the definition of three or more people hurt or killed in a shooting since Buffalo on May 14th, the U.S. has seen 48 mass shootings since that day. Five were here in Michigan. This weekend alone, three separate shootings in Wayne, Saginaw, and Kent counties left nine hurt and four dead. This week, New York and Delaware consider comprehensive bills that include red flag laws, something that's also been considered here in Michigan. This would be a policy that, if um, in place in Michigan, would allow law enforcement or other eligible petitioners to request an order against someone who is at risk of, of, of suicide or interpersonal violence, including mass shootings. Can we draw a line between things like red flag laws, safe storage laws, and a decrease in violence? Yes, we can. And in general, states with more gun violence prevention policies have lower rates of gun violence. And but action at the federal level has been slow, despite renewed attempts after the Uvalde shooting. But with mass violence trending upwards after the pandemic, Geller says a fresh look at an old problem is needed now more than ever. There have been a lot of people purchasing new guns since the beginning of the pandemic. And we know that where there are more guns, there's more gun violence. The recent shootings here in Michigan and nationwide are reigniting efforts to address gun violence. This is what community looks like. More than 1,500 people joined the Silence the Violence rally this weekend in Detroit. It's the 15th annual march with the organization, and it's grown from its original size of just under 40 people, as you can see. This is more people are directly affected by shootings. I'm tired. I'm sick and I'm tired each year the message gets stronger and stronger that we need to do something, especially in the face of all the other gun violences that are happening across the United States today. It's all of us banding together and to really talk about doing something uh, with this gun violence and unnecessary and unreasonable violence that we're all dealing with in our community. Last week, President Biden laid out a plan to slow gun crimes. It looks to ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines. But if that can't happen, the president wants legal purchasing age to be raised to 21. He's also supporting more red flag laws, expanding background checks.